Sega. Greetings, lords and ladies, and welcome to episode two of the King's Council. Today, we're taking a closer look at resources in the game, what they are, how you can gather them, and what to bear in mind when managing them. The main resources in the game are silver, food, stone, and wood. In the game, you use them to build and upgrade buildings, pay tribute to unlock new regions, for crafting and pledging. We'll talk more about crafting and pledging in episode 4. Finally, there is gold which you can use to speed up game progress, to buy certain units and equipment, exchange for resources or unlock cosmetic items like crest colors, symbols and so on. Silver is the easiest resource to procure, but it's also the one you'll need most in order to build and upgrade your buildings and realm. Your main sources of silver are blacksmiths and taverns in your towns, and you can use your markets to exchange it for the resources. You'll get additional silver per tier of your blacksmiths and taverns, and you can reduce production time significantly by having only craftsmen working in them. So you should consider building them next to military buildings and have a good supply of workers in your town. Quarries will mainly provide you with stone, but on rare occasions they can unearth silver and even gold and coal deposits, so be on the lookout for those. Some masters, like the old sea captain here, when assigned to a resource building, give you a chance to get silver instead of the normal resource, in this case, food. Every now and then, merchant camps will appear in your realm and provide you with additional silver income. All general resources have an equivalent random source. Finally, a great source for silver are battles. Every time you win a battle, with the exception of easy battles, you will be rewarded with silver and sometimes another resource. The tougher the battle, the higher the reward. Add in the fact that you also gain unit experience, honor, and can hone your tactical skills, battles make an excellent choice to gain coin. From spring to autumn, food is relatively easy to come by. The steadiest source for food are farms. They grow crops on fertile lands and up to two tiles around them. This means you will have to make sure there is a water source near, but once this is set up, crops regrow fast and can be harvested regularly. In winter, the fields lay barren however, so make sure you have enough food in stock when winter is coming. Another option is fishing. Every deep water tile has a chance to spawn fish, and you can work these tiles with a harbour at your nearest town, given that it's on the same terrain level and there are no obstructions in the way. When your lakes freeze over in winter, you have a 50-50 chance that a fishing hut spawns on that tile, and you can carry on fishing until spring or until the source is depleted. While sheep provide you with a reliable source for crafting material whenever you share them, you can also butcher them for food. Finally, deer are your random source of food which periodically replace a tree tile. Stone is another main resource needed for building and upgrading buildings, as well as walls, roads, bridges, and more. Quarries are your main source of stones. Each tier of your quarry will allow you to mine another deposit simultaneously. Before you can mine a deposit, you will have to prospect to find it. The deeper you dig in search of deposits, the more likely you will find them and the more likely you will find silver, coal and gold deposits instead of stone, so it's worth building quarries on high terrain. Bear in mind though that quarries and their deposits take up a lot of space because of the way the terrain can be manipulated, so make sure you pick a big open space before you start digging. Like merchant camps, boulders appear periodically and provide you with additional stone. They often get washed ashore next to a river or lake, so be sure to check your river beds. Wood is another important secondary resource needed for many buildings. There are two types of trees in the game, pine and oak trees. The former grow faster but provide less wood, while the latter grow slower but yield more wood. Woodcutters can fell trees and plant them on the tiles around them, but trees also naturally propagate and spread on fertile land. So as long as they are close to water and you don't fell all the surrounding trees, the forest will take the land back in time. This process, however, is much slower than growing crops, so you should keep that in mind when you start chopping them all down. Just like merchants, deer and boulders, deadwood appears randomly and provides you with another source of wood. 
Apart from providing a neighbouring bonus to houses, slums and mansions, markets allow you to exchange any of the main resources into another. You can build 10 markets in total and the bigger your market network, the better the exchange rate, 5% per market. The All Craftsman bonus provides an additional 2% exchange rate per market, so in the best case scenario you will get 7 wood, stone or food for every 10 silver and vice versa. So even if you fall short of one resource, you will always have another option. Gold is a special resource that you can acquire throughout the game or buy in the merchant guild for actual money. You can use it to buy special units, equipment, speed up processes in the game or unlock cosmetic items like special realm crusts, colors, and so on. Let's have a look at different ways to get gold in game. First off, every day, your loyal subjects will leave a gold tribute in one of your castles that you can collect. Secondly, if exceptionally rich guests visit your taverns, they might pay you in gold instead of silver. The more developed your tavern network, the higher the chance you will attract these valuable customers. As mentioned before, quarries have a chance to unearth gold deposits, and you can mine them just like stone or other resources. Whenever you fell trees, you might find a tomb hiding underneath. But beware, you might bring a powerful curse on your nearest town, lowering your workforce there. Woodcutters and all three types of farms have the ability to track, i.e. search, for game in the woods. If you search in the wrong hex but your prey is near, a number will tell you how many hexes away it is. Once you've tracked it down, you will receive honor, crafting material, or gold, depending on which animal you've tracked down. Finally, if you follow the king's or queen's path, a series of quest objectives tied to your overall progress, you will be rewarded with gold, and the same goes for some stages of the battle quests. Everything in the game that you can buy with gold, except some cosmetic items, you can alternatively craft using a blacksmith. For this, you need a special resource called crafting material, and we will talk more about it and the crafting process in episode 4 of this series. And that's it for this episode. Next time, we'll have a look at changing the landscape in your realm and managing water. If you haven't already, check out the first King's Counter video about general realm gameplay. And if you found this episode helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, keep it regal.